Well, here we go for the grand final of the 2023 Under-23 Women's National Championship. It's the grand final, South Australia against Queensland, playing for the Joyce Lester Shield. James Harris here, and alongside me is Anthony Weatherstone and Softball SA Life member and royalty. Lee Hull, welcome, Lee. Thank you, James, and Anthony will be with us in a second. And uh, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit overcast, but we... Uh, and, and I think that's keeping the conditions a little cooler than what was already forecast at about 30, 31 degrees. Uh, the crowd is uh, starting to build up as well. You can't see them in the background there because they're all behind us. Uh, you can take that off the screen. I don't know who um, approved that. Uh, but I'll be having a word to producer Brandon after the game. Here's the Queensland team uh, lineup. They have been introduced and announced by the ground announcer, and and uh, just getting interrupted yet again. Maybe I should sit in the middle next time. No, I like my spot here. Lee, two incredible games that we've seen already today. We saw South Australia defeat Queensland quite comprehensively. And then it was Queensland that beat New South Wales again, yeah. comprehensively. Same scores, wasn't it? Eight one, eight one. No, well, Queensland didn't yes, score. Yes, Queensland right. didn't score in the first eight nil. No. Eight nil and eight one. Yeah. The uh, SA team, the home team, they finished second after the minor round. They won the major semi, so they get the honour, privilege. Uh, of batting second in this game. They've had the game break as well, whereas Queensland had to play New South Wales, who will take home third place from this national championship. Wins just picked up a little bit as well after the teams are announced. It'll be the umpires and the statisticians. I can tell you statisticians for the game, Marcy Trusinski from South Australia. Congratulations to you. Uh, scoring the, the grand final along with Chris Bailey, Tech, and Sue Norris, who's the spotter. Uh, Lee, do you have the umpires for no, us? I certainly do. On plate, it's Deb Keogh. First base, James English. At second base, it's Darren Clark. And at third base, it's Damon McCauley. I think I've got that in order. The, uh, and congratulations to these umpires as well. Sure. Acknowledged for their work throughout the tournament uh, and officiating in this grand final. Uh, Anthony, Lee, we're about to pause for the Australian National Anthem. I'm going to ask the official to play, to stand and face down the first base line for us to play. And if able to, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please stand for the playing of the National Anthem. Teams may come together now, perhaps shake hands, acknowledge, meet at the plate. I don't know if they know the drill or not. Here they go. As uh, we're about to get underway for the 2023, under 23 Women's National Championships. We were here just seven months ago. I was going to say, you were sitting on the, you two were sitting on these seats seven months ago. And I was doing the event. Queensland were the winners. They played New South Wales and South Australia finished third. The officials all shake hands as well. We will see the South Australian team go into their defensive positions, take their warm-ups and the... Lee, you may as well take us around the diamond while we've got the chance. Thank you, uh, James. I'll be very pleased to do that. Well, there's been a change at the uh, meeting and the DP, Georgia Hood, comes in to pitch. What a surprise. Not 
Uh, so Michaela Jank Jankovic goes out to pitch as to Neve Adams. So it's the same set as, up as what they had in their first game today. Becky Havis is at first, Maddie Scott at second, Charlie's Callanahan third, Taylor Chillingworth in shortstop, and on the green, green grass that's been remown, Hayley Benighton, Abby Jorgensen, Georgia Ballard, and we have no DP, I believe. Uh, thanks for that, Lee. Um, as we scan the crowd, it's growing as the game's about to get started and underway. People just getting their refreshments and their food last minute from uh, Bar 66 and the Red Stars Cafe, Georgia Hood, pitching for the Red Team, going through five warm-up pitches. I was just going to say the phone blew up in the last half an hour. I normally don't take a phone call uh, at any time and my phone has just melted uh, with people on their way to the ground. So get down here, you've opened the gate. It's going to be a big game. The two best teams have made it. Uh, the, the, the standings have shown us that, the, the for and against. So I think we're going to get a different game than we got this morning. Queensland much improved in game two today. It's just going to be whether or not they've got any gas in the tank. For Lee, you mentioned that the South Australian team are going in unchanged. Why, why not? Why change a winning formula? Well, there's no point in it unless you can improve it and they can't. Harari, Kurahara to lead things off for the Queenslanders. Very impressive tournament, 16 hits, hitting 5-16. Watches the first one over the plate. You heard me right, 16 hits in she her did. 11 games played. That's outstanding. Well, we said in the last game, she's the prototype leadoff, and uh, Georgia Hood, radar on for the first pitch. Second pitch is there as well as Charlize Callahan fires it across to Becky Havis for the first down. The nerves start to uh, settle a little. <laughs> really? For me, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, that's exactly, exactly <laughs> for that. So the wind stopped. The last game, there was a swirling wind around the infield, making it difficult. That's just completely stopped. It's overcast, so it's humid. The ball's gonna fly off the bat. Yeah. The noise is at ground level. At, we're right, what, 10 metres away from the play. Yeah. I can almost hardly hear myself here. Uh, what a player this girl is, Soraya Hampson. Another one of the gun shortstops we've seen. Yeah, we, we didn't see Evans earlier in the day. I did see some strapping, so hopefully she's OK. She okay. is named as DP, batting six in yeah. this game. Already a big crowd online as well. Foul ball and Neve Adams. There's, oh, there's, a foul, there's a foul ball simultaneously happens in the baseball. Uh, the, the Giants' fourth game in their series is uh, only about uh, 90 feet away from us. Hopefully we don't get too many more interruptions as Hood is ahead of the count, one, two. Change up and a ground ball back to the pitcher for the second out. One to three. Good positive start. Lots of support for Queensland online. Louise, Michael, uh, Nicole all cheering on the Queenslanders. And South Australia, Heather, uh, Dana, Leanne all barracking for us. We've even got some people from America watching. So Brooke Stewart hits three for the Queenslanders. She played for South Australia seven months ago. And hasn't she made the step up in this under 23s team? 550 batting average, six RBIs for her team. Gee, that's good, isn't it? This will be a good battle throughout the game. 2 0, no, free hit here. I'm loving the red, yellow, and blue, the tri colours of South Australia around the grounds. I think. All the state teams had trainings this morning and they timed it so they could be here. Junior team out there is doing the uh, doing the scoreboard for us. Stuart fouls this one off, so what you can do baseball, we can do too. Just better. Oh, this is a statement early in the game. <laughs> Stewart protects and fouls off. 
and the count will even up at 2-2 and we started at seven teams of course east texas baptist university ineligible to play finals but they'll be probably watching from sydney they uh, flew over to new south wales yesterday my new favorite team i'm a i'm a tiger fan now i'll be watching them in the nca double uh, double a uh, div three comp didn't they add a lot to our competition? Oh, I lights mean, out. We know it's a national competition, we understand that, but they just brought so much. Stewart with the hands. Oh, not tight. Just to the right of the right field line. Yeah, the East Texas Baptist team uh, beat everyone. Um, but, you know, an invitational team, not eligible to win, but can come and play. They only played a single round, so they played each team once, the six teams. So the results actually counted, but they didn't really matter in the standings in the end. OK. Especially when they've won <laughs> anybody in that regard. But best group of people you will ever meet. Ground ball to the backhand side of Callahan. She didn't have time to turn her glove around. It went that hard, so Brooke Stewart will be the game's lead-off runner. There's yeah. the Eastern replay. A, a shot like a rocket past the glove of Callahan. Just saw the change up, just hung, kept her hands back, and uh, just got up between Callahan and the third base line. Discipline. Jess Rohde. Rohde. Strike called. From Deb Keo, the plate umpire, just Rody, just double checking with the with the plate umpire to see if that was the bottom of the zone or not. Kenzie Peebles waits on deck. Oh, what a hard shot. shot through the field and Georgia Ballard it is at right field. Holds on to the ball, just checking to make sure the runners don't try and take a, an extra step or two but great shot for Georgia, Rody. Georgia chose the right option then don't throw the ball unnecessarily around the diamond when you don't need to and you just saw then too when Rody got to first she turned back around to the bench and she gave him a let's go in a big way Queensland pumped up to defend their national championship away from home against the home team who have never won it in the 20 odd years that the George ne Lester Shield's been going. Never been in the grand final. Never been in the grand final. Who gets a sign and deals? A called strike on Mackenzie Peebles, who unsurprisingly hitting 438. Wow. That is such a strong the, player. Yeah, that a DP in the game this morning. Now playing at left field. Crushes Ooh. it down the left field line. This is a different Queensland intent that we saw this morning. Straight away, this is the second time that's happened in two batters now. They've seen the change up, which was so effective this morning. Yep. Both Stewart, Rody, uh, and sorry, and now Peebles all have seen the change up and they've all pulled the ball left. So you can see that it's obviously something that they're looking for in the count and they're going to make them pay for it. So, well, Hood needs to get that out of the zone, then yep. low in the zone or away from the zone. It was so effective this morning in that first game, but uh, Queensland have evolved in just a few hours, which is uh, impressive. It's what you expect at a national championship. One, two, count. Wasn't too bad for height, I don't think. Maybe on the outside edge, Lee. Yeah, but I, I also think, James, that batting first is not a hindrance, really, when it's not a time game. If I had the choice, I'd bat first because you can get some runs on the board. If you if you field first, you can make two or three errors. You can be looking at runs. Ted ball, she fouls it into her thigh. That's just my theory. Yeah, Lee, I'm with you. I like hitting first as well. Don't know why. I just do. So Let's so have a look at the Eastern replay. She wears this right on the right thigh. Right on the right thigh. <laughs> Thanks to Spacequake Sports. Ooh. Change up. South Australian legend and uh, ex-Australian player 
uh, multi premiership coach Linda Martin always won the top when she won the toss, always wanted to bat first to stamp your so authority on the game. So, so did I those years at state make them uh, chase right from the outset. Both teams are going to be nervous, it's going to cost you in the field more than it does in the back. Another oh. change up that Peebles fouls off. So, the Queenslanders, you're right, Anthony, good pick up early in the game. The Queenslanders trying to hit that change up that Hood has thrown so effectively well this morning and I mean you guys said this morning when you were watching the game that first part when Summer struggled early those runs that SA got early on completely changed the complex of that game it was a four or five in the first five in the first that came from Multiple four walks. walks and a hit by pitch and two hits uh, Full count, so payoff pitch will see the runners going with two out. Just jammed, jammed a bit, and Chillingworth gets underneath it for the catch and a sobbed out to finish the first inning and a threat early from the Queensland team. Yeah, perfect start for SA from that perspective. I mean, granted, runners on. Great pitch by Hood, just comes inside, jams her on the hands, and the superstar Taylor Chillingworth takes the easiest catch she will get today over at shortstop Queensland, doing their usual circle formation at the start of a game. Well, their entire lineup yep. is out there. They That's always it. do this every game that they play, they come together. And today for South Australia, with the honourable task of the Batgirls is a couple of names that you will see in the future in this competition, I'm sure. The very, you will see in the future in this competition, I'm sure. The very impressive pitcher from Sturt Falcons, Ollie Durham and Abby Bastian, both from the Sturt Falcons. Both have stayed experience in the 14s and 16s. Bell White, Taylor Chillingworth and Steph Trzinski are their favorite players. Who would have thought those three superstars would be on I'll take you around the diamond if you like, boys. Emily Solomon pitching to Matisse Sorbella. Jessica Rohde is at first. Harari Kurahara second. At third is Brooke Stewart. Shortstops Soraya Hampson. Left field Mackenzie Peebles. At centre fielder Kiana Henair. And then at right field Nicole Konica. And the DP, as you mentioned, James, is Taylor Evans. We saw this before, uh, we saw Summers warming up in the fourth in the last game and the question was how far Solomon would go yep. and here she is backing up. We know she's a yard quicker, so the down attack to start the game for SA. Leading things off the bottom of the first inning for South Australia. Team leading on base average of 619 is Hayley Benithan. She also has a team leading 13 hits. hit by pitch the first pitch of the early game today this time she sees a called strike hasn't she slotted in the lead off position you oh. know if, if you knew Haley before she went to college you say she's down about three or four I would have thought she's become the new miss fixer she can catch she plays first she plays outfield she's played a variety of hitting roles in the slot leading off what you get from Haley is 100% commitment yeah that a big question. The team loves it. Has a go at that one and a swing and a miss. So Solomon gets ahead of the count. Solomon's pitching stats, 18.3 innings, 13 strikeouts, ERA 3.436. All right. The ball's up. It's in between second and right. Right field it is, takes a catch. In the end, pretty far away from Kurihara at second base, who looked like she had it covered. So just a little bit of breeze blowing to the right side yeah, of the just diamond. picked up after another one of my bold statements, Howard, there was no wind at all. So good to see that last at all of the news. You were famous for it, mate. Oh, exactly. West Torrens, pitching depth, questionable. Maddie Scott is joint leader 
for the South Australian team with a batting average of 407. Believe it or not, three hitters. Matty Scott, Neve Adams, Taylor Chillingworth, all 11 from 27 for the tournament, hitting 407. Gee, yeah. Going back to an earlier point, too, you forgot about Maddie's mum. The softballer in the family. She's been the she's been the, the genuine surprise packer. Oh uh, yeah. Not uh, that we didn't not that she wasn't gonna be great, but she has come back so much better than great for, for SA. Um, and she's been a huge inclusion into this team. I, just and, yeah, she's come back stronger, much stronger, and she can hit the ball really hard now. It's high and well left from Maddie Scott. Yeah, she looks so much more a complete player now, so much yep. in control of her zone in regards to what she's demanding at the plate so that she can do her work. But anything middle and away, she just makes you look pretty ordinary. Yeah, well, both the second base players in this particular game, the grand final of the 23 Joyce Lester Shield, uh, are both complete players, I believe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Harari and Benithan. Scott, they're all guns at the top of the Maddie, lineup. Yep. Slaps it to shortstop, and how's the footwork of Hampson at shortstop? She glided across the top of the skin diamond, yeah. kept and the glove low. You'll see on the Eastern replay too, she's fielding shallow inside the line, trying to counteract the speed of Scott yep. for that exact shot. But uh, look, at the, look at the attack on the ball by the girl. You know, yeah. Just the, the great ball, footwork. Balls don't James play. Balls don't play her. She yeah, plays the great ball. footwork, as James pointed out. Georgia Hood now. Batting three. Average is down about 367, but she's got a team leading 11 RBIs. And three intentional walks. So we might see that Chuga run to be in scoring position for Hood at any stage during the game. And Queensland will be most pleased with the retired the first two batters. Then they can get the Hood and Chillingworth yeah, with, nobody with, no, with nobody on. That's so it. absolutely yeah. spot on, Luke. You can see her hand. She's well out in front of the plate. So Hood seeing this ball like a balloon at the moment. So. I haven't seen anything really off pace so far from Solomon. They try and pepper that outside edge on Hood. Well, they did that last night too, and she nearly put a hole in the commercial partitions carpentry sign out at centre right field CPC. So. I'd be, uh, I'd be too careful. I'd be careful about giving it too much out there. Good change of pace. The first one of the innings, and Hood goes down swinging. First strikeout of the game. Queensland will be super happy with this. You just see here on the Eastern replay. She's just, yeah, just a great change of pace by Solomon. Well called by Sol Bello. And, uh, yeah, Hood was looking for a fastball and didn't get it. But Queensland now, they're going to be sitting in there. Obviously, just they've beaten their rivals, New South Wales, convincingly in the prelim. But the fact is that they now got SA. They've had them a couple of innings. It's zip-zip. It's, you know, as James settled earlier, the nerves are going to be settled. So Queensland in a much, much better place right here. So this game is on for young and old right here. Yeah, five uh, people appearances at the plate for Queensland and three for South Australia. So they'll get something from that because it's only a small thing, but it's big in the whole context of the game. Well, South Australia showed in the Gillies last year that the hardest way to win a national title is to play three games in a row back to back against the best in the country. Yeah. Queensland is the defending champions. If they're going to defend, they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to beat the two other best teams in the country back to back on the same day away from home. So it'll be a worthy win either way. Taylor Evans will lead things off for Queensland here. Top of the second inning in the 2023 Joyce Lester Shield. Kayla Yankovic in the South Australian bullpen. We haven't seen her yet today. She has 
an ERA 3.7 for the tournament, 31 innings pitched. Yeah, she might have a big role to play because obviously Hood's carried the uh, she carried the first game, so so she's um, you know the longer this game goes on, multiple times through the lineup. They've already, they would have already seen her two or three times. Then they're going to see her again. So Jankovic may have a big role to play yet. Evans goes hard. Good player, isn't she? Great player, Neve Adams, for such a young person. Got an arm like the rocket. Everywhere you look, they're all great players, mate. Yeah. They've been amazing, just the talent. Yeah. Change up. It's called. To two count. I mean, the Australian selectors are down to our left. I mean, they've been busy watching 30 odd games of softball in four days, but obviously a lot of planning, not just going ahead to the next year's World Championships, but we're talking 2028, 2032. This is that group. Ground ball to short. Here's Chillingworth. Fires it across for the first out. So three ground balls and a pop up for the four outs so far for Queensland. They've Two hits in the game as well, so every batter to this point has put the ball in the play. See here on the Eastern replay, Chillingworth attacks the ball really well. I was nervous there because you can see her, she's throwing the ball as she's coming up, and that makes it high, even though Havis is tall. Nari shows bunt, goes foul. But Not she, a bad idea. But she does a great job in controlling that throw now. We saw her earlier this morning have a Nine or ten pitch at back, Brown grinded out a walk. Four for four last night. Made a great double play with, uh, sorry, double play opportunity. Great pitch on the outside edge. They're the toughest pitch in softball to hit. Especially if you're a puller of the ball. Because you, your natural reaction is to pull the ball. If it's out there, you're not going to get much bat on it. This one gets away from Adams. One, two, count. Shout out to Casey Smith from Victoria. Just heading into the stands. Unluckily went down earlier bravely to New South Wales in the second semi. What was the score, do you know? 8-4. Thank you. Single to Harari. Hanari, who just gets her hands to the ball, gets it up the middle, and squeezes a shot for Queensland. Third hit of the ball game. Out of seven batters. And you just mentioned Casey. Smith. She joined a, a commentary team at, she, uh, yeah. in Victoria for yeah, Space Quake Sports. I had, had the pleasure of uh, working with her over there in Open One. We were going to try and sneak her on the mic if we could uh, if we could make it all work, but who knows? We might get an opportunity at the 32 games that Space Quake are showing at the Gillies to uh, come and do some commentary with us. That would be great because she's a great person. Great talent, plays women's and men's softball. For those that don't know, Spacequake Sports have been live streaming softball for seven seasons now, and they are sponsoring the broadcast, and every game of the Gilly Shield will be live streamed. And that's thanks to Spacequake Sports. Fantastic. It's going to be a huge week. So Queensland in a completely different position from this morning in that first game. We've got runners on, only one out. Conica's done some good things, not only in the field, but she's done some good things with the bat. Canari was the, she was the, the hero from the previous game. She was the walk-off run at the end of the game, but she also made a dazzling play from left field with a picture-perfect throw right on the plate that uh, as good as you could find wasn't it yeah run? it was just a ripper allowed allowed uh, queensland to stay within that mercy range chopper to shortstop and chillingworth plays the lead runner so i didn't think she had time because that chopper into the ground took up a little bit of time as hanari with the wheels 
been a good play in the end to Matty Scott over yeah. at two. Yeah, you can just see Konica hands out in front, does the right, does a good chilling with, makes a great play because she doesn't spend it before she's got it. She makes sure she controls the ball first, then she makes the play to the impressive Scott. Who holds the ball and doesn't throw the ball with a chance of it going to get in the way at first. Isn't it, oh, just looking at the SA infield, I mean, you know, normally you've got lots of players of different ages, different sizes and all the rest of it. You look at these four infielders for South Australia, they're all tall, big, strong, athletic players. It's an intimidating lineup, matched only by the intimidating power of Sorbello, the catcher, number nine. We haven't, we haven't seen the belt the ball. She hasn't had an opportunity yet. So she hasn't, but there'll come a time. Four RBIs and six yeah. walks. But she hits it so hard. Adams looking for that pickoff attempt. But Konaka, the runner on one, probably didn't get off far enough. No, so no. keep your eye out on that one. for a ball to the good eyes of Sorbello will force the battery to have a little chat. 3-1 count. She's got a really good eye for a zone for a tall player too, tall athletic player. Mm. Sometimes, you know, because the, your height sometimes plays against you because your zone's obviously bigger, but... Uh, it's probably why James was such a good hitter. Oh, I, knew, Not I, a tall. I was thinking the very same thing, yeah. but I wasn't going to say it, Lee, so thank you for doing that. Well, he was a terrific hitter. I've seen him hit three home runs in the state game. Uh, what was it, James? You can just fill us in with that bit. Or oh, which time, don't you mean? <laughs> oh, just one. Once. It, so Bill it, well it was actually three home runs and a double. But <laughs> no. if that's okay, Lee. Um, so Bello has about a one in four plate appearance ratio of yep. getting a walk because they pitch her so carefully. It's a good pitch, isn't it? Well, as you've been saying all along, Lee, when the batters have got their hands well out in front of the plate, that means that they've, they're all over the speed of it. Mm -hmm. So you, you know what's probably coming now. It's a full count, though. You've got wheels at first. Two out. Strike yeah. out. But it was off Got to complete the play. No, the they've tossed up. it over to the coach, so that'll do it as it bounced before it got to the catcher. Strikeout swinging for Saul Bello, and that is Georgia Hood's first strikeout of the game, denying Queensland yet again with a runner. What do you call a gathering of national champions? Because I can see them in the left field outfield, the... Uh, Stars have gathered to watch the under-23s in the grand final. You can also see them in the right field outfield as well with yeah. that with that banner proudly showing the 2022 national champions. Perhaps a collection of stars with a Z. It's a consolation. Oh, we're getting into, we're getting into territory here. There it's they not are. Help us. There they are. There's the stars on screen there. Little star? Who's that little star? Who's that? Looks like Maeve. That looks like Maeve. That looks like the, the better of the Harris. What about the jeans? I was, gonna, I was nearly going to go down to the softball range, but I realised Jordan's there, so... But what about the jeans with the Yeah, Harris's I know. Coming? And that's the Glenelg team. Isn't it going to be amazing? How's she going to so. handle that? Because she's going to have Jordan's skill and James's ego. It's just going to be a match made oh. in heaven. So, look at... <laughs> I'm not sure anybody with an ego is going to happen, to be honest. Solomon continuing here. Be interesting to see how long she goes in this game. Here's Taylor Chillingworth. Hitting 407. 11 hits. Had her committed. Yeah, she's quality, Solomon. Yeah. She's been here, she's been on this very field doing this very thing at an 
national championship final only six, seven months ago. So, oh, what a great pitch. Yeah. On that outside edge yet again for two strikeouts now for Solomon. Becky Havis to the plate now. She was... I reckon Havis is somebody that can trouble Solomon because Havis doesn't mind the ball going down because she just drops in underneath it. Line drive opportunity. The speed won't worry her. Yes, yeah, she's got to swing that power swing meets power pitch as yep. well. So she gets good exit velocity off the bat. With a heavy swing, here's Solomon. Is an example of what we mean this one fouls over and, and as I look over my shoulder I can see Raya Lachlan doing yoga in the back of that stand watching his son pitch <laughs> can you see that <laughs> I don't want to see that I'm trying not to look <laughs> see. This is Becky Havis sure enough on the bat. Becky Havis the Seacombe Tigers representative plays first base in the C-Max Premier League batting 300 plus and is a standout franchise and player in that team so two ripper, one count ripper personality too so leading a, a great group, group of young girls chopper oh, yeah. still, oh, still yeah. able to make the play terrific play by Hampson we thought she may have muffed it with a fumble as the ball was coming down I had a little bit of topspin to it comes out of the glove but she recovers picks it up bare hand fires it across to Rody at first that again you know you can't judge a book by its cover if you look at the size of Solomon she's just uh, sorry not Solomon um, Hampson first pitch swinging for Callahan and Rody knocks it down and completes the play for a quick one two three inning six batters to the plate six retired for South Australia so it's a arm wrestle here well, the thing about playing shortstop at the high level, you've got to have lateral movement, you've got to be alert. And uh, Soraya showed us there how alert she was. She knew exactly yeah. where the ball was. I was just going to say, like, she's, you look at her and, you know, it, just the, the fact that she can throw the ball so hard yeah. and so fast that she can make a play like that on the line at shortstop and yet still throw the runner out. Becky Havis is no slouch on the, you know, up the first baseline. Yeah. So just you've said it all tournamently the shortstop talent in the country is just lights out yeah. at the moment well you've got to be a really good player to play shortstop don't well, you? and you go through all the lineups not only that we saw bell from act last night making some great plays and with the bat we saw the new south wales player as well before um and you've got chillingworth here you've got hanson here all the shortstops they're all multi multi-dimensional players so Queensland back to the top of their line. Rari Kurahara shows bunt, goes foul. We saw Callahan just acknowledge just before the start of that pitch there that they were back at the top of the line and you could see that she shuffled down, noticing that she's gonna have to try and take away that short game concept for her, force her to try and hit away. Chillingworth attacks this one, has to be yeah. quick, and she is. That's the chili that I like just there, when she comes all the way up in her throw, then she just looks unstoppable there. You can just see, makes the play, but she comes up, stands tall, show, throws shoulder to shoulder. Lead off retired. Havis makes it look easy over at first, retires the dangerous Kirihara. This one into play, and Chillingworth's got the same Ooh. play, but Hanson is super quick. Oh, wow. I mean, Chillingworth couldn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong there. She was shallow, came in and attacked the ball, but you just can't underestimate how quick these Queensland base runners are, as Hanson has just done that perfectly. Four hits now for Queensland. One out, runner at one. Will we see her take on the arm of the catcher as Stewart comes to the plate? Yeah. Cold. I think you'll find Queensland aren't going to wait around too long here. I think they're going to start 
trying to force this game under SA yeah. bit through short games or even aggressive base running through stealing, hit and run. I don't think they're just going to stand there and just try and hit Georgia Hood out. Five stolen bases for Hampson in the tournament. Big jump. I think, well, the Queensland coach just threw his hand in the air, so wondering what happened there. I think a missed signal, whether it was the batter or runner, we're not quite sure. No, miscommunication. Yeah, I think behind on the count now. Fouls that one off. I thought they may have gone short with a runner on, as there's been no score yet. Well, I thought they were going to go more like the, uh, the hit and run, just like after the yeah. the first pitch just try and force the the hitter to be aggressive and, and just take the risk because you know you've got genuine wheels at first to try and make some chaos on the base pass pitch from hood just to mix up the pace a little and then drop one short try and get stewart swinging in a bad pitch to either protect the runner or to uh, even put it behind the runner to advance it's all about generating that first run of the ball game. Low in the, and the runner takes off. That gun arm from Adams. It's tough to come up, throwing over to two when that ball's in the dirt like that. Let's have a look at the if Eastern you, replay. If you see a replay here, just watch Hanson as she comes up. Just watch the amount of just watch the amount of dirt that comes out of her shirt from that yeah. stand up. <laughs> She's uh, left, got a bit of West Beach with her now. Importantly, runner in scoring position as this one's chopped up. Maddie Scott has to reach out. She takes it in. There hasn't been a call, so the, the fielders don't know. The throw to home, tag in the head. She drops the ball. Oh, wow. That's the first run of the game. Wow. Didn't hear a call. Hampson takes advantage. There was no call from any of the umpires. So a little bit of chaos caused. Let's have a look at the Eastern replay. The ball. Is hit in the air, Maddie Scott. English, the umpire at first, was looking down at the plate umpire for a call. Yeah, that's a great call at the plate, though, too, because Adams has done a great job to get around, but you can see that the speedy Hampson has just got her hand out in front and underneath the tag. That's a great call at the plate. Keo points out the ball that spilled out of the glove, and Hampson's stoked that the First run of the ball game is a good play at the plate. Runner still in score position for Rody. She Stewart was way behind in the count. She was protecting and got her hands to the ball and a little bit of luck. A 50-50's gone their way. That's all it takes. Dan danger here with Rody though, with a mm. runner at second. Yeah, if you were at two out, you'd nearly just about pitch around her carefully and just put her on base but the problem with that of course is that then that sends uh peoples to the plate and she's lights out as well so as you'd imagine at a nationals there's just it's pick your poison it's all the way up and down your lineup it's hard to uh to play that game georgia continually trying to open up that inside edge of the plate one of her favourite spots to go to because when she throws in there, she die on unhittable, yeah. but she just hasn't had too much luck with the blue with it. So, change up that road attacks left fielder Haley Benoit and takes a catch. She changed her mind at the last minute, turned her glove up the other way. Benoit just sitting there thinking, What's everybody worried about? I didn't run underneath it. The, the runner wind. stays put. <laughs> the wind's just got grabbed it a little bit and it's now just dropped on me. Yeah, now there's two out. Evans on deck though, so you've got to you've got to throw up people's now, you just gotta keep the pressure on. Peebles was a soft line drive to or a soft pop-up to Chillingworth to finish the first inning, leaving two runners aboard. She's now got run, another runner in scoring position. Again with two outs, she drives this one opposite field to Georgia Ballard's got to get under bikes head across and takes a great catch. catch on the line. So the run does score for Queensland. 
But a good catch to end the threat in the top of the third. That's well judged out there by George Ballard. It's not as strong a wind as it was earlier in game two today, but it's still moving around a bit out there, especially at right field. So she's judged that well. Runner in scoring position. Any mistake by Ballard out at right field scores a run for Queensland. So that's a great out. The task ahead for the SA batters is to get on top of the pitcher for Queensland. Solomon, she's uh, Emily Solomon. She's gone pretty well so far through two innings, six batters, six retired. South Australia did eventually start to get on to Solomon in the early game this morning. Two innings, one earned run, one walk, but no strikeouts, and she's already got two yeah, in you, this game. You get the sense they're going to do the reverse. We're going to get the air attack late. Uh, and Solomon's just going to try and go through the lineup at least once, hopefully twice for Queensland from their perspective, and maybe see Summers come in with the air attack and close it up at the end. So, batter seven, eight, nine to come. Ballard goes first pitch, tries to squeeze one in down the line between these three hitters batting seven, eight, and nine. Ballard's hitting 294, Jorgensen's hitting 345, and Adams hitting 407. Mm. Not bad for the bottom three. Yep. Yeah. Adams at nine has been crucial uh, for the under 23 state team from SA. Change up from Solomon. So she goes hard and down, then she goes change of pace. Two for Ballard. Goes hard and down again. Mixing the pace up well, Solomon and Saul Bellow, the battery for Queensland, who now have that one run advantage. School of thought from a coaching perspective is you'd be just looking just to let your team just play their own game, especially since they haven't all batted yet. But when you're already chasing one in the third, you have to now just go into chase the one yep. as that mentality. Level it up first. Ballard leading off. Her focus needs to be anything close to the plate. I've got to either foul it off or put it into yeah. space, get myself on, be the base runner, let eight Jorgensen with wheels advance me and get Adams up at ninth and to bat me in. Top of the zone, maybe a little high. And Ballard doesn't have the tallest frame. Now 2-2 two -two count. Moves up the handle. Low for a ball. Ballard, five hits, couple of walks, five RBIs as well. Super important pitch coming up here. Full count. It's a hold of this. It's got to drop in between the second base and right fielder. That is what they call no man's land for a reason. She's done enough to put it into play and then a little bit of luck now on the side of South Australia, the leadoff runner aboard, their first base runner of the game. Rodi has come at least 10 feet shallower than she was before, as you would expect. So, Jorgensen just taking a strike because she's got to. Jorgensen can play short ball, but she can also hit one to the fence. We saw he hit two triples in one game earlier in the week. I'll be going short ball here. Low yeah. and outside for a ball. If, uh, Ballard if, pretty quick. He chased him one run only. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. If Adams is hitting 400 and you've got Benith and Scott and Hood to follow, getting a base runner in the scoring position is priority one at the moment. Jorgensen's the player to do that. Don't want to be greedy. That's, that's a fun. great punch. She avoids. Good take. The contact as well because she bunted it straight in front of the right-handed batter's box. Advances Ballard, but a great play from the Queensland defence. Let's have a look at Sorbella. She's quick. 
for a tall player. Fires it across to Kurihara for the first out. Great fielding by Kurihara. To take yeah. that ball, you've got a player running full tilt. Yep. Now Adams, got to be patient. She's been really disciplined so far these last couple of days. She's got to find a good pitch. That was one. It's one out, but you've got qual two quality, three quality power bats to follow. Yep. So. change pace she's good Solomon Adams just lets go of the bat with one hand it's and a fouls it off yeah it's a thinking person's game when you come into the batting box by now at the end of the week you should know what this pitcher can throw yeah so Bellows so when she goes to a go-to pitch yeah. she gets behind the count she's she a, goes to that yeah she's a very good catcher and you're right that there, there are some patterns emerging you know in what's going on I mean, in the last game, Lee, I haven't seen a defensive shift like we saw against the New South Wales first base when we had second base on the other side where they basically, Queensland, played with two shortstops. Yeah. That's telling the battle of something. Yeah. Up and out for a ball to two count, and Neve Adams may have breathed a sigh of relief, but also good enough to stay off one just out of the zone because that's where the catchers want it. Yep. They don't want it in the zone when you're ahead of the count. You just want it just outside. It's after this one. It is popped up. Kurihara gets under it and calls out Rody at first for the second out. Haley Benithan will come to the plate with two out. That's a good pitch by Solomon. She's just she's challenged her exactly as James just said, right at the top of the zone. She knows the count's 2-2. Two, two. She can't leave it. She's got to go after it. So Solomon forces her to chase it up. She gets underneath it. And now SA2 out. But Benithan comes to the plate for the runner in scoring position. First pitch swinging. Hit up the middle. Ballard is quick. The shortstop with just a bad bounce or a slight fumble. Let's give the RBI to Hayley Benithan. She ties up the game. We were talking about it, Lee. We said... You're only behind in one run. You've got to just get that first run back. Then you can go back to your game plan and try and work the game out. Eastern replay, the shot up the middle. Hanari just, yeah, that, that's a bad bounce. You yeah. can't give her the error for, no, no. for that as Haley Benith and smokes one to centre field and ties up the ball game. Maddie yeah. Scott now. So now, now we can get back to just now going head to head. You don't have to worry about catching up so now batters can be free she goes that's left in. side that's in. just oh. spins out of play with that side spin opposite field fades well, away just at the last moment i've said it a few times this week and i'll continue to say it the left fielder is playing too square needs to be near the line because if it goes in it's going to hurt you big time i hope lee that none of the states coming for the gilly shield pick you up as a special consultancy coach because your fees would be well worth, well, well, worth, well worth the money <laughs> <laughs> that's right called on you, see what I, you see what i mean yeah stormy look how square she is in yeah. the field of play yeah. well when was the last time you saw scott pull a picture like solomon deep to right yeah Haley benithan has a stolen base in the tournament she's got some protection from the left-handed batter i'd be sending her yeah. here's maddie scott with two strikes ground ball to short just fumbles oh, around with it she couldn't get a handle on it and then throws it to the fence the right fielder gets the ball in quick smart conacher doing the backing up maddie scott gets to two Halle benithan's at three two runners in scoring position with two out for south australia and so this is what we were talking about earlier today as you just see on the eastern replay some tired players after 30 odd games in five days it's been a these girls are amazing with how they've been able to back up day after day and now in the Nationals. The Queensland coach has come out to the middle, so we know that Summers has just come back in from the bullpen. So Solomon might have done the job. She might have protected Summers long enough so that she only gets to look at the lineup twice. 
Well, it is the second time through the order. It's the third inning. There's been two hits, a sacrifice bunt, and a wild throw from the defense. Two way out. You've got to pass her up here, Georgia, yeah, well, surely. Come on. Runner in scoring, two runners in scoring position yeah, for Georgia Hood. I know, yeah. And, and you're doing it to create the force as give well you, as I Give you four options. Yeah, I know. At that's the moment, right. you've got one option. That's right. Just the amount call. of times you've seen Chillingworth just hit triples. Yeah, I understand that, but you've got, you got to deal with it. Team leading 11 RBIs. I flipped the sheet to the stats for Queensland. No player has more than eight RBIs. So out of the two teams, she's leading the RBIs. Solomon's attacking her, though, and attacking her low. She struck her out in the first hit. She's now got two low pitches on here, who, here where Hood hasn't had a chance to really get underneath the ball and drive it. And now she's two strikes ahead, so she doesn't have to throw another pitch in the She's had two RBIs from a hit in the early game today as well. Yeah, and it was change. against Solomon. What yeah. about a change up here? Oh, I've got two strikes, so I don't need to throw anything near the plate. That was nearly a double bluff, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> One and two count for Georgia Hood. Oh, it was way outside. So yeah, she uh, needs to go to hard. We were a bit low. dramatic, weren't we? One all here in the Joyce Lister oh, show. There's your oh, change. Yeah, there's a change. But, yeah. yeah, but see, the thing there, the only thing I don't like about that is that she's swinging at it. Yeah. I don't want the ball anywhere near Hood at the moment. I want to I want to test her medal and say, here's three pitches. Can you stay off these well, the three pitches? the easiest way is to pass her up with the oh, intensity yeah, yeah. rule. But, that, but see, that's the advantage. If that happens, it doesn't matter, does it? Give her nothing here. One, nothing two, hittable. Oh. <laughs> Second strikeout for Hood in the game. Third out, leaving two runners aboard, but Hayley Benithan has brought a runner in. Let's have a look at that final pitch of the inning on the Eastern replay in the left-handed batter's box for mine. It's, yeah. It's a great pitch by Solomon. It Don't went, get me wrong. It went over the chalk. And Sorbello's framed that right on that edge as you want. Here's another angle. Well, Queensland have that's got a, one yeah, there. Yeah, look at that frame. That's a, that's a Christmas card from Solomon going to Sorbello. Thank you for your help. She's turned a ball into a strike there. Love that work. So that's Hood's reaction was uh, warranted, <laughs> wasn't it? But hey, let's talk Hayley Benithan. An RBI single. With two out, Abby Jorgensen put down the sacrifice bunt. Georgia Ballard led off the inning with a single, and they tied up the ball game. So in a quite a, uh, I just flick a little spider off my score sheet. In, <laughs> in, a, in an event, us. in an eventful third inning, uh, Queensland score, South Australia reply. It's a one-all ball game in this arm wrestle. It's a deadlock in the as we start the fourth inning in the 2023 Joyce Lester Shield. It was just a matter of time before we saw a team score. You were, you were going to say Lee? Oh, no, I've forgotten now. It was that long ago. <laughs> Working with two of the best here. Loving this. How good is this? Softball on a Sunday afternoon. National Championship final. Ground ball, here's Chillingworth. Gets a kind second bounce, and you can tell Evans was laboring a little as she ran up the first baseline. I hope she's okay because she's a gun, and we want to see her back on the diamond soon as another gun, Chillingworth, makes a good play at shortstop. Here's a look on the Eastern replay. Nice change up. Just in case you got a little bit of momentum batting in mind, coming off that last shot, take a first pitch and get after it. Good call by Neve Adams just to uh, change the mix. Our favourite newspaper columnist and social media reporter Robert Laidlaw sits to my right. Obviously, the game uh, behind us isn't interesting enough for him, so he's come over to watch a better game. See, makes Premier League would be more interesting than the game at the bat, but... Ooh, Anari is the hitter for Queensland. 
Just a little friendly rivalry between the two Diamond Sports. Now we, we're good friends with the baseball here in South Australia. They're very good patrons of Bar 66 as well. Discipline brother, isn't she, Hanari? Real discipline. Every turn at bat. Tuning in. Well, she hasn't a single yeah. earlier in the game. She's trying to outthink the pitch, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Those three people. Fouls this one off. She's all class, Georgia Wood. She's just. This is innings 12 on the final day of a five day national championship. She yeah. pitched 21 up to this point. It's a big day, and she is leading SA. Two standing strikeouts ain't going to make her feel good. So an ERA of 1.6. She's going to take it out on take it out on them with the ball. So she's a she's a rock star. Game worthy of a final so far. One all, back and forth, back and forth. It's just the best in the country in their age group under 23 is just going at it. Just awesome to see. One out and Ari puts this up and three players going oh. for it. Georgia Hood takes the catch. <laughs> Havis saw them coming, so yeah. she backed out a little bit. But yeah. Adams and Hood, neither of them took their eye off the ball as we yeah. watched the Eastern replay. So, so Hood called for it first. She said, I got it. And I don't know if Adams heard her. Uh, and that's why Adams then got involved late. But Georgia had called that nice and early, but then Adams said, I'll go. And I don't think Adams even saw her there, so chase the horse. Doesn't pitch, matter. They yep. got the out. That's yep. the important part. Baker is the hitter. It's a called strike as Amber Hood just turns up the dial a little on that one. Don't have the pocket radar going this tournament, but I have a feel for that one. It's about 125. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely in triple figures because. Uh, I was talking to the selectors earlier uh, in the week. Hood was the first pitcher to break three figures on the uh, for the tournament. Yeah. She throws missiles. Make uh, with a 1-1 one -one count. Low for a ball. James on a knife edge now. Middle of the game really can go one way or another. Somebody needs to stand up and break the deadlock. Pulls it to the right side where Maddie Scott is waiting for the ground ball. She has been, for mine, one of the most impressive players in this tournament. Maddie Scott, she's got a few friends around her as well yeah. to complement that, but... Look how good her hands are. That's a pitcher that left these, these shores a couple of years ago, and now she has got the hands of a veteran infielder. That is just beautiful softball, great infielding. She is a complete now player. And um, hopefully she keeps doing the rep stuff because I think she's going to start asking the question going forward. Solomon Stain in the game. So even after the heroics of Benithan in the last innings, Queensland coaching staff Sticking with Solomon, even though they're in the heart of their lineup, SA, with the game at one all. But we do know that Summers has warmed up and she is ready to go. So it'll be the cleanup hitter for SA shortstop Taylor Chillingworth. Did you just mention she was out there having a chat with the catcher Sorbello as well? So they were talking through the batting lineup mm. who's coming up, what to pitch. She's involved in this game, although she hasn't taken the diamond. Yeah. Warmed up, ready to go, as you said. Yeah, and it'll be a completely different look for SA late in the game. First pitch swinging for Chillingworth. She struck out her first time. But the batters three and four in the order for South Australia for three plate appearances have had three strikeouts. They are Solomon's three for the game. Pretty good by Solomon when it's the three and four hitters in the SA lineup. That's a win you'll take every day of the week. Can I make a bold prediction, Lee? I know yes, it's your go, job, but go ahead. Georgia Hood will not strike out her next plate appearance. Right. Noted. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> she 
the camera, the camera at the moment this week is 40 to 2, actually. Yeah. But I'm, modesty prevents me telling you who's got the 40. Chilling, we're starting to just find out when you're a superstar player in your age group, no matter what, people start watching you back. And yes. they start working on your strengths and they start working on your weaknesses. And she's just, she's not getting anything consistently that she can do anything with. She's getting it inside low. She's getting it away off speed. She's getting it fast up. She's just, it's, she's finding what it's like to be an elite level player. That's a great pitch. It's tough work when you're a gun and a great change of pace again by Solomon. It's the mix. Chillingworth, she's just got, she's just got five different pitches there and it's super hard to settle as a hitter. Not even Lee would have predicted that, that Georgia Hood was a strikeout to end the first and the third innings, and Taylor Chillingworth was a strikeout to start the second and the fourth. Let's move on to batter number five. It's Becky Havis. 43 now. Smashes yeah. it right side. Conaker makes the ground oh, and takes a great gosh. diving catch for the Queenslanders. Oh, Denying Havis a hit, probably extra bases. A web gem in the 2023. Joyce Lester Shield final. I just said Havis, I liked her against Solomon. Yeah. She just gets in and under the ball, yep. Havis. So that type of pitching would work for her. And she's just missed by inches from extra yeah. bases. And that what an outstanding horizontal catch by her. Nicole. This gun has got everything here. All smiles for the Queensland outfielder. Two out. Charlize Callahan watches the first one for a cold strike. So just put yourself in the shoes of the pitcher. You're pitching and you're backed up with plays like that. Just lifts you completely. Yeah, I mean, Solomon knows that she can go in there and just go hard yeah. at it, knowing that she's got a defense behind it. Same as Hood. High for a yeah. ball. And that's what you want, isn't it? That's what you aim for. Callahan looked locked and loaded. And she stopped the swing. Half, as the ball was halfway down there. It was this morning's game when she went bang the first turn of bat, wasn't it? Yep, low for a ball. Yeah, she had three RBIs. Yeah, I think first turn of bat. Loaded bases. It with Hit a, a double. Of, yeah. Not against this pitcher, though. No. I'd throw change up again. That's a really good change up. Pulls That's the reason the why. Foul. To two count. Two two count, I'd throw the change up. Two three, I wouldn't. Or three two, I wouldn't. I reckon. Bottom half of the fourth inning with two out. Hard shot to second. Kurihara knocks it down. She lost the ball. Callahan. Will advance to first on the error from second base. It was hit hard. Let's watch the Eastern replay. Just seen Kurahara just come up and apologise for that. I don't know what yeah. she's apologising for. She just had a rocket hit at her. She's knocked it down beautifully, but unfortunately just lost it just briefly behind her. And Callahan good enough to get up the line. Ballard had a really good first at bat. Had a long at bat got on with that shot to the right side. That ball that just fell in between the two fielders. Ballard hits this one foul. There's a deep bench on the South Australian team. Are you looking at burning one of those substitutions for a pinch runner in the fourth inning in a deadlock game? Not at two out, not at the moment, not uh, yet. Swing and a miss. You've got Zoe Thompson there. So you would have only burned somebody there if you wanted to protect the hitter to start the next innings off. Because Ballard got a hit in the last at bat, you're sort of going to play that she might back it up. And in that case, you're only going to play one base at a time. So Zoe Thompson's the speedster. So, Well, we're through four innings here in the Joyce Lester Shield Grand Final for 2023. So let's recap as it was Queensland batting first this time around. 
two hits in the first inning, but the South Australian defense held tight. A one, two, three inning with Solomon, who's doing the pitching duties for Queensland. Then in the second, Hanari got a hit, but the South Australian defense held tight and Georgia Hood's first strikeout to end that inning. Another one, two, three inning for Solomon in Queensland before the top of the third inning saw Hampson beat out an infield single, a muff fly that went into foul territory. That Hampson scored on was the first run of the ball game. Yep. And then South Australia returned with a run. George Ballard leading off the third inning with a single, scored on the Haley Benithan single. And since then, it's been a deadlock. So it is a one-all ball game. We're at the top of the fifth. Here's the nine hitter, Saul Bellow for Queensland. I've got her going big shot here. You won't, keep, you won't continually keep these players, these sort of players down, in my opinion. Well, for once, Anthony was short of words there as that ball gets away from the catcher. See how careful George is pitching her here. Hard shot to Chillingworth, it gets under the glove. So to this point, she's been perfect on the ground ball, but this one stayed low. It found a gap. The size of the ball under the glove as she tries to come forward to the ball. Let's have a look at the Eastern replay and Sorbello, the leadoff runner, red leadoff batter for the inning, is aboard with the leadoff batter of the game. Hooray Kurohara to the black. Shows Bunt, gets it down perfectly. As Georgia Hood comes in, does the fielding and retires Kurihara, but she does the job. Here's the Eastern replay, and now Sorbello's at two. Right play, wasn't it? It's a one all ball game. Just play the percentages. I think I'd go, I'd think I'd again. go again short. Yeah, because this girl can run like the wind. Hampson is a short ball specialist. As even the fake bunt still thirds into play as Hampson couldn't get it down. A strike is called. The left side of the infield for South Australia is right in tight. Yeah, the reason why I say that, James, is because you put the ball on the deck, you never know what's going to eventuate from the actual play. Bunce again fouled into the chest plate of Neve Adams. There's two strikes, so that might take the bunt out of play, but it doesn't take out the slap. running slap, does yeah. it? For that play, Lee, are you tempted in parking someone on third base, maybe the right fielder, leaving the third base and the shortstop to field a ground ball? Oh, you could do that. Yes, a very good point, because that's where she's going to go. George won't give her something she can pull. Look at the angle on the bat. That gives it away anyway. You know, you just, just watch it. Watch her closely. The angle on the bat says that's going through there. Between shortstop and second. Uh, shortstop and third, sorry. Like that. Third base. She checks the runner who was a mile off. Safe is the call. Well, Callahan's yeah. first intention to check the runner was the right one, but she went through and threw it over to one. Timeout called for a 1-3 split. I think you see on the replay too, I think Maddie Scott and Chillingworth were both in the right place for them to play a, make a play on the lead runner. Yeah. So you see here, so Chillingworth's already there, Scott's already there, the runner stuck in the middle. Callahan could have probably turned around and got that lead, but they got the out. Oh, well. Eastern replay shows it. Anthony, you're right on the South Australian defense, standing on second, standing on third with the runner in the middle yep. of the of the base path. Knowing where the players are, isn't it? That's one of the criteria. Both runners safely aboard. Any advantage we've got in here. the corners. You'll see a steal here, no doubt. The runner, we're looking. The runner was looking for a. Replay the, the signal to the coach. 
So Scott breaking the line shallow. There it is. Just to yeah. make sure that if that runner does go, there is an opportunity to take the ball out of the air behind the pitcher, but I'd be surprised if they did it. Pop up. And second base, Matty Scott calls out. Shortstop Chillingworth for the catch and the second out. I was just going to say Stewart's an RBI hitter in this Queensland <laughs> offense, but now there's two out. So Sorbello will be replaced by Leggett. So now the speed is a factor. Both runners on the corners for Queensland. And the, the last game finished, and you see on the replay here, Maddie Scott taking a great catch and that swirling breeze that's picked up again. We saw Leggett replace Sorbello in the prelim against New South Wales to come on and pinch run to squeeze the game out. But wasn't required in the end. It was a... Uh, Ro Rhodey's hit four in the week. She's got an on-base average of 571, seven walks, six hits, and importantly, three RBIs. The previous batter was a situation there where I know it's after the event, but you could go squeeze, squeeze to get that runner yep. through from yep. first, the runner at third, yeah. and, and fielders will pick the ball up thinking the runner's run coming. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Lee. Yeah. And you, so many times when you see that very play happen, it's chaos. Yeah, yeah, it is. So. Hampson takes off. She's five stolen bases for the game uh, for the tournament. Make it six. And a one-one game. You're not throwing that ball. No. It's a danger time in the roadie. I tell you, the two in scoring position. Well, if you said to Queensland, if we had two players at the plate, could we have roadie or could we have Peebles? Peebles. They've got the two hitters that they want yeah. in the situation that they want. It's well, only the outs that are against them. That's yeah. actually uh, Hampson's second stolen base. Yep. of the game but if i'm the coach of sa i'm walking this person right now I'm so saying, see you later it's a two two count so yep. you still got pitches to play with yep. a one two count so yep. you're way ahead of the count change great, up great pitch george she used it really well this morning and we talked about it in the start of the game that when queensland seemed to be looking for it so sa put it away in the third and the fourth and that's the first time Neves really come back yeah. in a hitting situation where she's called it again. She doesn't need to over hit, just put the, make the ball land somewhere. Ground ball here to Chillingworth, who makes no mistake this time. They hold tight after a couple of defensive mishaps, you'd say. Eastern replay, the ball goes up the middle, Chillingworth Let's the runner go past, then comes and gets the ball, fires it across for the third out, and Jessica Rohde is the third out of the inning. And Chile's had a ball go through her as well that inning, so to be able to, in that pressure situation, come back and do that, super important. Four outs, he's made Chile, six to threes. So, Solomon, in the fifth still. This is a, this is a superhuman effort because again, Queensland, they've had to play all the games today. The only advantage was that the first game and the second game were both mercy wins, but that doesn't yep. mean that there wasn't a lot of pitches thrown and a lot of pressure there. Just seeing the South Australian legend and coach Tracy Apolsky walking past us there. You can see you can see the, the focus on the face there. Yep. Jobs to be done here. Coach Lucas over at the fence talking to his players. We saw the Queensland coaching staff bring his group before. So now it's Jorgensen leading off the bottom of the fifth. She did a bump before just to move her yeah. on, but I, I think she might go swing. Oh, she yeah. a, Absolutely. A bump, bump, bump. Swing. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be over to right field. At, Camped under it. Yeah. There's Nicole Conacher. Conacher. Good catch. Not easy out there with the uh, being close to the beach here. We uh, we get some we get some breeze and she's made she's judged that really well. Neve Adams at the plate, the number nine, looking to get on here, Neve, so we can go to the top of the lineup with the SA team. Yeah, she's had a strikeout and then got on by an error at short. And the Nathan's looking very dangerous with the stick, isn't she, in this game? Well, she went uh, she went 235 feet to where the stars over there are watching this game. Good mix by Solomon there. She's it doesn't look like it's a full going 
change up, but no. she's just changed her. She has like a second like grip where she's just thrown an off-pace ball and just sort of sits there. It looks like it's spinning. Adams committed to it. She's just she has to go because it's on the edge, but fouls it off. Solomon ahead of the count. Adams now has to fight. Anything close. So after five innings and over an hour's worth of just quality pressure softball, the two best teams in the under-23 nationals are one and one in the fifth. Oh. I thought that had hit it, but it's, uh, it's off the yeah. knob of the bat. It was a quick pitch, wasn't it? Yeah, but... Made some pace off the uh, yeah. end. I mean, Solomon's starting to look like a pitcher that's thrown a lot of innings. She's Change she's, up now. She's not jumping around. She goes hard and low. Uh, Adams has got no choice because, again, Sorbello, who's just doing a great work framing the ball, yeah. she just keeps putting the ball in spots where you can't. She just asks the question of you every time. Are you going to go? Or are you going to... Yeah. Nobody wants to just leave the bat hanging. When you face pillars of the ball, you throw the change up. There it is. There it is. And Adam's good enough to realise that she's got no choice but to stick with it. She can probably hear me under that yeah. helmet, I think. <laughs> it's a great fighting at bat. It, it's great, long at, great long at bat here by the South Australian superstar. Stormy is about outthinking them. Yeah, that's the opposition. That's what you're going to do. The fifth foul ball of the at bat as Adams continues on two strikes just to fight off anything remotely close in just a quality at bat. Crowd starting to build. The word has got out. We can see some of the Adelaide Giants now coming over to watch. And, and as good an at bat as Adams was having, Solomon has won that battle. She's won some crucial battles today, the Queensland pitcher. She's had the better of Georgia Hood. She's had the better of Taylor Chillingworth. And that is just a quality fighting bat. The one person that she struggled with is the player she's facing yeah. right now, which is the South Australian leadoff, Hayley Benighton. Now there's your answer to the pitcher being replaced, because I wouldn't replace it. First pitch swinging for Benighton. She gets under it a little. It's a high ball out to right field. It looked like yeah. Hanari's ball straight off the bat. But Conaker comes across and takes a good catch. Great communication. Three quick outs in the fifth. We've got a deadlock. It's one all after five complete innings. Great contest, isn't it? That's, that's what it, it's, it's that's worthy what of a final. Yeah, yep. that's right. So, the, final. the trick here, of course, is that South Australia will be 2 3 4 in the bottom of the sixth. So it's hard to make a case to change Solomon based around the fact that three and four she's basically owned. But as James said, I would not be getting betting against Georgia Hood letting that happen three times in the same game. Well, how do you break a deadlock with these two great teams? Do you just back your batters and and hope they go about it? And well, we've seen we've seen evidence Queensland very uh, very dialed into you know, engineering what they need to engineer to win that particular game. So this is not a shootout. This isn't a matter of, it doesn't matter if you win by 10 or five or one, you just need to win by one. Yeah. So it's really just a matter of, you know, Queensland, the advantage and disadvantage as we spoke about earlier in the broadcast was that, and there's, some, there's going to be a change in their batting lineup as well, yeah. um, which is probably time for these things to start happening is that you're just looking to score one now, so it's the dangerous designated hitter at the plate. Mackenzie Peebles. Left field, sorry. It's left fielder. No, it's Mackenzie Peebles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At, 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 at the left fielder. Left fielder, yeah. yeah. DP's Taylor Evans. Sorry, yeah, she was DP in the last game. Sorry, my apologies. 
hitting 438 for the tournament, 525 on base there's average. That, there's that off pace pitcher, Georgia, now. Well, when it's just, the score line is one all, and we're in the fifth, uh, sure, you, let, you, you go with your bats, but you can also do something that they're not expecting. You know, it just change the game a yeah. little. Well, Queensland have got that amount of hitters that they can do that yeah. on the left, on this side That's of the right, diamond. Yeah. We really, from our perspective at South Australia, we're really relying on Matty Scott to be that person who ironically will lead off the sixth for us. But if we get to the tiebreaker situation, that's when you need to mix it up. Well, James talked before about that bench. You've still got King, you've still got Roberts, you've got Thompson. So uh -huh. Georgia Hood calls out the third base player, <laughs> Charlie's Callahan. <laughs> she just commands and the infield, doesn't she? She's a, a leader on field. Yeah. Charlize Callahan saw what happened to Neve Adams, even with the gear on when she bounced off Georgia Hood before in that foul ball on the first baseline, and Charlie said, I'm not having any of that. <laughs> Good call. Here's the change yeah. that you mentioned, it's Anthony. It's Seren. Yeah, so she picked Letizia. up... Letizia. Letizia. Yeah, yeah, so she's picked up a bunch of walks. Uh, a lot of teams have been scared to throw into her laneway. I'm sorry I was talking when you were oh, interrupting sorry. there, Anthony. That's Just right. a, a modest two hits yeah. for an average of 222, yeah. but five walks increases that batting oh, on-base average to 643. And that's what they're trying to do here, is get her on base and then replace the player straight back. So this, her hole at bat here is purely to get on. Drumming's now starting to intensify, intensify at particular times of the uh, of the game. Every little trick coming out of the out of it now. Ground ball. Scott moves across, takes the ball and fires it to Havis for the second out. So not a bad move from Queensland. They're trying something. Trying to make something happen, trying to break this deadlock. Absolutely, but that's as equally, it's a brave attempt too by Georgia Hood and Neve Adams because she has got a lot of walks because of she's a tall, strong power hitter and they challenged her. They went at her and they got a ground out. So that's a, that's a win for SA, but yes, you're 100% right. You'll see benches starting to clear now. Kina Hanari is the batter in the box. She's got a single in this game. One of five hits for Queensland. Great pitch, George. That's a great pitch. As much as we talk about Solomon's had a long day in the circle, this is a long day now for Hood. This is innings 11 against the same opposition in a semi-final and grand final at a Nationals. But That's in the grand final, as you know, Anthony, all too well, you find that exit, oh, don't you? you 100%. Know, you're going on emotion. Oh, yeah, you? there's no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And all of them, you can all see that they're all sore, they're all tired, but anything that's going to be close to winning a championship, they're going for it. Change up that Callahan's able to backhand. Hanari really attacked the change up. It was high in the zone, but she got on top of it. Let's have a look at the Eastern replay. Wasn't a bad piece of the ball, but Callahan stayed down, fires it across, and Havis makes the play. That's the advantage of that tall first base at Havis. She's got that range to be able to pull those tall balls down. So I'd like to have a tally one day, or like the end of the tournament, see how many change-ups produced out. There's been a lot. Yeah. The looking at the scorecard, Queensland will start the seventh inning. And you can see... As With you, batters eight and nine. Yeah, right. But how many times have eight and nine this week had such huge impacts? You can see Summers, the pitcher, she's come out again, like James said, last innings, talking to the catcher, staying in the moment. So she's ready to go. We haven't seen any activity in the SA ball pin for about three innings now. So you get the feel that this is how it's going to go. One run needed to separate 
these two teams. Scott, Good, Chillingworth. There's some bat in there, isn't there? Now, Queensland will be definitely thinking if we can, if Solomon can get us through this part of the lineup, we're a genuine shot next innings. Stormy, you see how, far, how square this left fielder is? Mm. She's not going there, she's going near the line, I'm thinking, if it goes that way. Even uh, you can see the SA Stars out the back there, the Gilly Shield Open National Champions defending in a couple of weeks' time in the new year. January they're, 2nd to 6th. They're all standing with every game being televised on Space Rack Sports. You can see they're all up and about now as well in their Stars top, so cheering the home team on. Well, Scott got two identical pitches to go behind 0-2, and Solomon couldn't get a chasing one down low, so it's a 1-2 count now. Bottom of the sixth in a deadlock. One all. Gets oh, a piece I'm of the surprised. ball. Straight to the left Ooh, fielder. Yeah. It was perfectly positioned Lee. Yep. <laughs> 14 to 3. <laughs> Mr. Terrific really, really is gets let's, that type of comment from you, James, but fair enough. Let's give the credit to <laughs> Mackenzie did. Peebles out at left field. She read it really well. She, she took a good catch. And ne now if you're looking at Peebles, you can hardly see her. She's moved back first, yeah. towards the fence. First pitch swinging here. High for a ball. First every, pitch, every, sorry, first strike swinging is what I meant. Every summer has a swallow. That's right. Or every swallow has a summer. The first, 40, pitch, 41 to two. the first pitch that is remotely hittable or close to the plate, George Hood is going to swing at it. That one. There you go. Another prediction. Well, another it, prediction goes stick missing. To your strength, Anthony. Which is... Well, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, very, very kind of you. I would think be thinking after the type of day she's had, it'd be an aggressive at bat. One and one. One and two. Well, for it to be an aggressive at bat, you need to swing All the right. stick. I'll be, uh, I'll be back in, a, I'll be back next batter, boys. So I'll, I'll leave you to it to this one. <laughs> well, she'll be swinging at it. I can guarantee you this pitch. Swing. No, no two for a ball. Stop the. <laughs> let's just stop this game. I think no one's got near it yet. As Solomon oh, is doing a job right here that deserves the credit that we should be giving her. Two to count against the might and power of Georgia Hood. Fouls this one off. Did you just say giving Solomon credit? We've been pumping up her tires for just for this yeah. at bat, okay? Right, where okay. You, you're going back and forth with the oh, she'll swing definitely not. That one. That's what's called personality, actually. You should try and buy some. <laughs> That's why he got married three times. Oh, it's <laughs> a bit <laughs> high tacky. for a ball. We'll go to a full count now for Hood with one out. My eldest child is here today from Victoria, and uh, she doesn't know that. The count is full. Georgia Hood, Emily Solomon, going toe to toe in a one-all ball game. Hood fouls this one off. The ball ricochets off the light tower, back into the field of play, and. Just, uh, just one to get the timing. Kills that one off. The count will remain full, and we're looking for something to break the deadlock. There's the South Australian team on screen. And there's your hitter. Low for a ball and a walk from Georgia Hood. Now, out of all the predictions made, I said she wouldn't strike out her third time at bat. Well, she you got had a walk. three attempts. And so he's made I, it about I, him. I made one prediction. And, oh. and again, he's made it about himself. No, I was meaning before that just because of your charisma, Lee, that was, I was just highlighting how charismatic you were. Okay. That's a, that's a big word. Queensland. Rob Roberts. Call time out. Sophie Roberts to pinch hit for Taylor Chillingworth. Who's had two strikeouts? I look to my stat sheet and I can see that Sophie Roberts has been a busy player off the bench for South Australia. She's got a couple of hits, she's got a couple of RBIs. Having a good 
Look, having a good C-Max Premier League season for the Walkerville Cats, but just coming into a national championship final in the sixth, replacing a gun for a very important at-bat. Well, we saw an evolution of her game, didn't we, in the pre-season fully loaded uh, competition where she starred for the CPC Angels. They won the, the championship at the back of Becky Havis, two home grand slams in the grand final, but she got more walks in the pre-season than she did in the entire pre-season before. So she's developed a keen eye as well as that RBI power. Well, batters, the normal batters at three and four have gone two K2s, two KCs, and the base on balls, the big guns. One and one count for Roberts with one out and a runner on one in a 1-1 one -one ball game. Low for a ball, so Bello wanted it. She dragged it up a little bit. She can hit the ball hard, can't she, Sophie, when she's going? Yeah, she can, she can definitely. She can put the ball out, given the right pitch. So, But she'll be looking for centre right, centre left. She'll be looking for green passes out there. Low for a ball. 3-1 for yeah. Roberts. A hitter's count as Rody comes over to have a whisper to Solomon. I think it's don't throw it down the middle because Sophie Roberts will put you to the fence. I think it's also just don't quick pitch yourself. You're not throwing BP here. Take your time, make every pitch count. I'm saying throw a strike. Ooh, On the hitter's count, she gets after it, gets a touch of it. So getting a little bit of timing now, she's seen five pitches. Now she goes to the go-to pitch, Solomon. The one that's working today. Gets a fair piece of this. They're going to play the lead runner. Roberts uh -huh. has to be quick. Kurihara just held onto the ball a little longer, so the throw for the double play just went a little wayward. Brody trying to pick up a cheap out here. Let's look at the Eastern replay. Good play by the Queensland defence. Two out. We'll see a re-entry. Not a replacement runner. Re-entry. Taylor Chillingworth back over to one. Let's have a look at Rodia. I wonder if the camera softball. sticks on it here. She wants to get the, the tag. No, we didn't no, see no, it. It was good, it was good softball by Rodia, though, to, to go and get that ball to make sure that the runner didn't have an opportunity just to run round and, and, and get an extra base for nothing because as I've said all day I think Havis v Solomon is a matchup SA likes. Here's Becky Havis. That one a little up and a little out. Now South Australia with two out runner on one. Chillingworth has some wheels. Becky Havis swings a heavy stick. Callahan on deck goes hard it's up and Kurihara tracking the ball no way just oh, it. what an effort that was fumbles at the last moment it deserved an out the effort from that player was unbelievable she's a little hard on herself I think let's have a look at the Eastern replay she's of... running that offense full belt oh, wow what a great effort she is a Superstar. She, and she's been one of the players of the tournament for me. And that's why the right field of Conakry should be near the line here, because her line drive was caught in foul territory. The previous turn of bat. Havis gets a piece of this one. Turns Kurihara the other way. She knew that the tough play was to one because she would have to change directions. So she played the lead runner. Let's have a look at the Eastern replay. Chillingworth slides in hard and safely. Good work by Connor going to get in there real quick too, just to make sure that nothing else happens up the middle. Queensland coach has come in. The gate's still open. Traditionally, when a gate's still open, that's because the pitch is about to walk out. It'd be difficult to take Solomon off in this situation. Or oh, the coach can walk back in. Uh, the uh, what I was saying then, now what was I thinking about uh, something? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> too busy lighting me up. That's your. Harari <laughs> <laughs> was making the play before mm. get fielding the ball. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's yeah. she'll, she'll, that. she'll be. You can see she's disappointed herself, but you've got to remember the effort that she's yeah, just put in to get right. that one, and then she gets the next yeah, that's one. Fine. That's fine. Callahan had a situation like this in the club grand final for the Magpies. 
Another chance to be a hero on a big stage here for the third base. Callahan watches the first one for a cold strike. Now, there's two out with two runners on for South Australia. Callahan has a big hit to her name earlier today. With runners aboard. Pulls this one. Foul ball called from the, the plate umpire. Half Deb the crowd Keogh. was saying they thought it was in, but it wasn't. What a game. Let's have a look at the Eastern replay of this ball. Hit down the left field line. Bounces Ooh. in fair play just to the left of the third base. Yep. Would have scored Chillingworth easy. He only has to go over the base for it to be fair. That's it. So a great call from Keo. That's why I throw change up to her. Oh, two. Out. Low. See, it's fine to pitch her carefully here, but there's two down. Crucial part of the game. The most crucial part of this game. Mm. I'd be going to change up by a cheap, what we call a cheap out. One one ball game bottom of the six two out two on one two count. Right side foul. And it's Callahan. Oh, she's missed, she's only just missed on both lines. Yep. Has only just missed on both sides of the foul line. Well that's, said, Anthony. And that's why Conica needs to be close to the line. I tell you what, the thing, the other thing Luke. that's in the back of your mind now is Callahan's the six batter. So we're getting very close to Solomon looking at this lineup. The top of the line, it's coming again. And it's going to be in a very, very tight seventh inning. Off oh. the end of the bat, it's an awkward screwing ball as Rhodey oh. lays a heavy tag on Callahan for the third out. Well, the bodies are being put on the line. Rhodey was not dropping that ball under any circumstances. She's a great player. Look She's at that great. screwball off the uh, oh, end of the billiard cue. And she, have yeah. a look at this. She yeah. Yeah. You leaps remember. like a rugby league <laughs> tackle. I was about to say, you know, she's tagged her in the front. She didn't tag her on the side. She made sure she knew that she did it. Great play by Rhodey. The thing is, too, she remember had she had that play in the previous game yep. where the ball spun away from yeah, her yeah. and she had to go and get it. So She's had a couple of doozies to go and chase that. I tell you what, we're going to see... We're going to see some some coaches having to make some big moves here because you know south australia it's i mean solomon's done an amazing job but i just don't know if you can justify a fourth time round it's just well oh my hood God. will but she's got batters eight and nine before we go around to kurihara for a fourth time yeah and on the flip side of the scorecard we see south australia's hitters for the seventh inning will be seven eight nine before Solomon sees Benight for a fourth time. It's going to be super interesting, but just wow, what a game. Top seven, 1-1, one, one, national championship final. Some of the best under 23 talent. I tell you what, the Olympics in 2028 and 2032, Australia, the talent on display here. These are the players that are going to be representing at those tournaments. We're in a good spot, I can tell you that, for Australian softball. Conacher is the first batter in the seventh inning. Oh, Drives it wow. to the left side. Hayley Benithan throws the ball in, but the eight hitter for Queensland is the leadoff runner here in the top of the seventh. And she hit it with power, didn't she? It just didn't poke it through there. Yeah, it's a great shot. It's a great piece of batting. The thing to remember if you're just tuning in for the first time or you've been with us in this game, you've got to remember this is Queensland's third game back to back. So six hits in the game for Queensland, two hits to South Australia, so they've out hit SA, but they've had a very similar number of plate appearances. Just the one difference, now two. What was the change there, Mr. Terrific? Uh, Tanika Harris comes in, they have a hit for the catcher, Sorbella. All right. Cool. So whether or not this is speed, 
on but both both pay, both parts. We saw Queensland do this earlier when they changed Sorbello and they brought in Leggett yep. to do the running bunt. Pitch number two. I'm going bunt on this pitch. Yeah. She's thrown it one. A bit concerned yep. that Harris and Callahan are deep for yep. a run-out situation with the runner at first. They should yep. be away, shall we? Conaker only had three hits in the minor round. So a, a crucial low order hit for, for Queensland and the changes to Nika Harris, who's had three hits as well, hitting 273. Patiently batting. 3-0. Oh. Yeah. A lot take of noise. Two pitches here. Take no, you take two pitches here. A take lot of one. noise coming from the first base dugout in Queensland. 3-0. We oh. just worried about the defense. Yeah, yeah. We, we, the short, we've opened up the short game to them. If yeah. anything, it's like we're asking them to do it. She will have to come back with a strike here, George. And she does. So if she's going to bunt any pitch to advance a runner, it's this one right yep. here. Yep. Because she's going to have to throw a strike. She's not. She can't yep. afford to put somebody yep. on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anderson yeah. Callahan still too deep. I like Yep. Good. Fires one in she and would have Harris. Been safe too, yeah. so the bunt been goes been down bad. the third base line, We're and it's a full count. Conaker returns to first. We dodged a bullet there. Yep. That was going to cause yeah. lots of problems. So Right-handed field, uh, you know, right. Well, the biggest, the biggest right problem would have had would have been runners at one and two, and then you've got um, Harari at the yeah. at the plate at none out, like yeah. it's an absolute nightmare. Timeout called on a full count. The South Australian defence just want to have a chat about it because now that there's two strikes on the bat of the short game, sort of is uh, is probably not going to be the play that Queensland make here, which means that they'll be looking for a lead runner. Uh, I don't know what else they'd be chatting about. Well, we've hardly seen any double plays in this championship off the ground yeah. because the players are all so fast. There's, you just, you're basically playing the lead runner. Well, George is going to throw a strike. That's the end of the conversation because she needs to throw a strike. She can't walk it. Harris gets a bit of the bat on it. Con Aker is in. Nobody Halfway second. down the line, all three players went for the ball because it was split in between the three of them, leaving second base open. And the pinch hitter, Harris, does the job. Conacher, single to left field. Harris is single to center field. Now, Harari needs to have a long turn at bat here. Just put the pressure, keep the pressure back on the defense. Another timeout called. You see what I mean? Yeah, Anthony? no you, spot, you, yeah. You, you, just don't just go after the first pitch. There's two runners there. I've said it a thousand times on these broadcasts. Nothing changes for me, regardless of where we are in the game. Runners at one and two, none out. Yeah. I'm playing this ball short, yeah. and I'm giving, taking the pressure of the force away. I have runners in multiple scoring positions, and I've got two outs with two guns behind. Shows bunt, yeah. puts it down, it rides oh. the line, and... <laughs> And oh. Callahan watches it roll over the foul line, and as soon as it does, she picks it up because that would have advanced two, and Kurihara would have been safe because it was perfectly placed. Callahan did a One great millimeter. job selling that. Yeah. She sold that the moment. She just sold, made that's a great job by Charlie's at third. Great angle from Houston replay. She puts this one down. The out at one. Perfect. So this is what I would have done because now I've got the speedy shortstop Soraya at the plate and you've got Stewart and then you've got Rody to come. No force, so I don't have I'm not worried about a ground out in the infield. There's still um, two hits for Hampson. She changes into the right hand as batter's box with runners in scoring position. Do you put her on Lee? Force it. Yeah. That way you've got more defensive plays. Well, you've got four four chances rather than one. In a tight ball game. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we talk about putting her on, but the reality is, you know, it's your best first their best. It's yeah, late. Well, I understand that. But Eleven hits, I know, six I know, RBIs. We, we argue about this all the time. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, about playing percentage yeah, play. Yeah, and, and, and I, play. I do as well. But I, I still, you still got to have faith that Hood and Adams are going to give you what you need, and the field's going to back you. Chops it and Hood. The plays it himself. First, and the runner was held up. Kone Kasua, Georgia Hood, stand two metres in front of her. She froze as Hood turns, fires it across to one for the second out. That was a rock start. Georgia Hood was not letting that ball have to worry about getting any further past her. She took ownership of that. Brooks Jewett now a single. First that tricky one down, down the right field line and a pop-up to second base for her three plate appearances. And it goes high for a ball. So Brooks Stewart, who played for this team seven months ago, has two runners in scoring position. And guys, leads, or well, one of the team leaders in RBIs with six. Leads a bat sensibly here. Yeah, 550 right. batting average. Don't one of the baddest batters of the tournament. Yeah, she oh. did. Yeah, good point, Lee. You're right. I mean, it's tough. You've got to be disciplined. You're going to have to take some pitches here and, and find your pitch because... You know, I mean, whilst George, Georgia Hood is a rock star, she's already pitched a game today. Yes, there's a lot of emotion, and that's what's fueling the tank at the moment. But she's still a human being, which means she's sore, she's tired, her arm's hanging. Will she, she, be, at, will she be able to throw a changer? She Smashes it up the middle! The runner scores! The ball comes off the foot of Jorgensen, the centre fielder, two-run score off the bat of Stewart. A South Australian seven months ago has just broken the hearts of the team she played for. Hits it up the middle. Jorgensen was trying to be careful. Two runs were plated. The Eastern replay shows one. Here comes two. And for the first time in about 15 minutes, the two men to my left are speechless. Well, whatever Jessica Rohde does here is a bonus, isn't it? Two runs in the bank now. You just can't understate how good an at-bat that was. Oh, I mean, yeah. we were Fantastic. talking about having to take pitches. Yeah and try and be in the count and find a good pitch to hit. She's done that, and wow, that's just a... That's per perfectly executed shot. That is a... That is a Australian class first at bat. That is just awesome. In such a big spot too, but... SA have got to believe they've, they've come from behind before. They've got a stacked batting lineup. Solomon's going to be into the seventh. So to pace yeah. from Hood is there's got to be some hope there that Rody goes to a two and one count. Stewart remains at first. How deep are we in our line when we come back through? Seven, Seven eight, eight nine. nine. Yeah, right. Wow, that's three massive outlets. Who's after it? And Maddie Scott takes a catch to end the seventh for Queensland. A big seventh inning as they plate two, and that is their lead. It is three to one. What is going to happen now in this game that's been an arm wrestle? Batters seven, eight, nine have to get the job done for South Australia. Here's the Eastern replay of the last out as the Queenslanders gather together. Solomon's still got the glove on, so it's going to be her. I'm not, I'm not surprised, especially now. Well, the, the, the biggest advantage that Queensland have got is that they've got one run that they can use to buy now. Yeah. They can't burn two, but they've got one that yeah. they can burn, yeah. and that's a huge difference. Give them a base for Yeah, if, yeah. It, if you have to, if that scenario opens up yeah. and it, and it creates, it creates something like that, but you can just see them talking about out there. I mean, Solomon, I mean, James wanted us to acknowledge what a game so far. She has just been outstanding since relieving Summers in the first game this morning, and she has just shut down this lineup. 
This is going to be huge. Ballard. So SA on the bench. So, so Bello uh, back into the game. Back into the game. Yeah. Yep. Here so we go. Bottom of the seventh. So it's Georgia Ballard up to bat. She's hitting 294 for the tournament. She's had a hit in this game. Solomon got her last time. She was the run that South Australia scored in the third when she led off with a single. She leads off here in the seventh. High for a ball. This is all about taking pitches here. This is all about going yeah. into as deep as these counts as you can. And put the pressure back on put the, the pressure back on them and get on base. Fouls. If you're swinging, off. you've got to make sure that it's going to count. Gee, she's pitched well, hadn't she? Oh, she's been outstanding. Terrific. A 1-1 count for Ballard. And so far, I mean, Queensland, again, as I said before, three games in a day, it's just a Herculean effort. That one's in there for a called strike. Ballard down in the count. One ball, two strikes. South Australia have three outs to score two to take it into extras. Otherwise, Queensland are your 2023 champions. They'll take home two under 23 titles in the space of seven months. Let's talk ground ball to the pitcher. Solomon does the job. That's one out. Let's talk player of the final. It will be selected at the end of this game and a medal will be presented. You look around the diamond, it's pretty much been Solomon for mine. Yeah, yeah. Shutting down the South Australian offence, only two hits. Solomon, what she does is she hits those edges so well and she just forces you to make a decision. Jorgensen first pitch swinging. Kurihara calls everyone out and South Australia down with their last out. First pitch. First pitch, yeah. And the scary part too, South Australia's awesome top order of the knife and Scott. Yeah. Hood, uh, May not get a they're, chance. They're yeah. the next three up. Yeah. So we we keep on asking Neve Adams beyond her years to be that to be the hero we needed to be. We're asking her again. Solomon, ice in the veins is that one. Is in there for a called strike. She's had a mountain of work. She's just come off a preliminary final. She threw the last two innings of the major semi. And she's gone through seven in the grand final as oh. Adams gets a bat to the ball and it just drops short a life for left, South Australia. We keep her. And we get back to the top of the order, a single and only the third end of the ball game for South Australia. Eve Adams is the catcher, so it'll be a two out speed up. Zoe Thompson for sure. Zoe Thompson. Yeah, it is. Comes in to run. Isn't it amazing? You've been sitting there waiting all day on, on uh, sitting down, waiting for your opportunity. And your opportunity just happens to be at two out in the seventh in a national championship final to come on and use your speed. But Nathan, the leadoff, will see Solomon for a fourth time. It's low for a ball. The keen eye for player 72. Well, I'd play, throw change up to uh, Hayley because she loves the pace on it, like most of the good players do. That's where awesome. I throw in here. Poised on one. Big oh. swing from Benarthen. Big, big swing. Just need to get that ball into play, just one base at a time. We don't... I mean, if she hit a big bomb last night, we don't need that in the right... I mean, we would be great right now, don't get me wrong, but just one base. Be a base runner for us, Haley. One and one. It's there to be hit. It's foul. Oh, just too good. Yeah. Saw Bello too good. Stewart, great shot. Carrari's just been outstanding all tournament. Rhodey's a, a gun. The shortstop. So, uh, just... The knife in. Oh. Oh. Speaking of ice in the veins, leaves oh. that one outside. Oh, come on, I've already had two, a heart two attack count. in two last two years. I don't need another one, thank you very much. Well, I won't be giving the mouth to mouth for say, resuscitation. Neither of the two of you go anywhere near me. Oh, <laughs> no, that's down. way too far outside. Two, two count. 
low. Benython drives at left field. She gets plenty on it. It goes deep into the corner, but it's foul. And Benython's fourth she? time through. She has a hit. She's got two fly balls. Well, the home run hero sign is where she went over last night. As much as it'd be great to see her go over again, the reality is she needs a base. But Queensland, Solomon, Sabello, been amazing. Defense, lights out. One out away from a defense of a national championship. Takes her time, but I think getting set as Solomon is on the plate and ready to go. Thompson on one. It's a 2-2 count with two out here in the bottom of the seventh of the grand final. But Nathan goes opposite field, stays alive, and it fouls, it fouls. And what an atmosphere. Solomon has to get a new ball. It's electric. Two out. Thompson has not moved from one. High for a ball, and Benython is showing maturity beyond her years. Taking this to a full count, yeah. fouling a few off in the Bad process. Advantage we get here is full count two out, so Thompson's gone. So the chance of anything being on the field of play, there's a chance that something could spill. Thompson's got the speed to make it an extra base. Benython fouls this one off. She's done three of those, hasn't she? Have to come back and reset, mm. but she did the right thing. The young Thompson, the youngest player in the SA lineup, was on her bike. She has to be careful for a line drive. You don't want to get hit by a battered ball. Um, Emily That's just has to, she has to throw a strike here. Benython and Solomon in an arm wrestle. Yes! It. It's a second hit of the inning as Peebles at left field, knocks it down, keeps it in front, but Nathan keeps the team going here, Queensland. Not panic stations yet, but it's Maddie Scott up to bat. She's swinging a hot sit this tournament. Benithan, what a great hit, second hit of the game. Didn't look like getting anything in the play until then. What a great shot it was, as you said, James. Hard hit. Maddie Scott now. Watches that first one in. Up on the letters. Georgia Hood on deck. Runners at one and two. Two out. SA couldn't have a better option at the yeah. plate. What are we doing now? In the left-handed box. Plate umpire sees that there's a ball spilled out of the chute. As we pause for a deep breath because... This okay. game is a 3-1 epic. Maddie Scott, one strike. Big swing and a miss. And we'll go behind in the count, 0-2. Well, that was the that was the winning the championship swing. That's yeah. what that was. That was a three-run homer if it made contact. Now she needs to dial it back. Now she needs to take her base hit. Solomon. Outside edge. The catcher Sorbello wants to check the swing, but no way. Oh, he's he's got, no. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a home game for SA, but the Queensland crowd doing a great job of getting behind their team and making sure that they know that they're just as supported here as they defend. One, two, count. Scott gets a piece of the ball. It's a fly ball out to Harari and Queensland win. On a catch to centre field. Make it three in a row for Queensland in the Joyce Lester Shield. Emily Solomon, have a game. What an absolute superstar she is, but hats off to Queensland. That is just a great team performance. They thoroughly deserve that. They've had to do it the hard way. Three games in a day. They've, they've been mercy by SA in the morning. Come back, mercy New South Wales in the reply. And then in an absolute epic, beaten South Australia 3-1 of just some of the best softball you'll see. I'll let you guys wrap it up. I'm going to see if I can catch Emily Solomon. Yes, do it. 
Right, we talked about Emily. Well, she's obviously the player of the grand final. Well, she's, our, she's our player of the grand final. Yeah, that's because, right. You uh, know, and the biggest change I reckon she made there was South Australia's vaunted top order. She limited their impact where Benith and Yes got a hit late. You know, Scott got one, but Hood, Chillingworth, she beat them on the day yeah. in such a big moment. Yeah. Um, you've just got to take it. And I think we're about to cross over to James here. We've got Emily Solomon, the winning pitcher here from the Queensland team. Seven strikeouts. You only gave up one run against South Australia. Oh, you must be on top of the world right now. Great group behind you as well. Yes, definitely. There's such a good group of girls. And you had the belief throughout the entire game. Yeah, oh, so, like, we were so in that game. We just really wanted to win that game, yeah. Yeah, had to battle it through. You lost to SA early in the day. Then you battled against New South Wales, only to come through three back-to-back-to-back -back -back games. Yeah, it was. it's a big day. Very hot, very tiring. Lots of headaches from all the screaming, but we did it, and that's, that's what matters. Well done to you, Emily. A beautiful game. I'll let you go shake hands and celebrate with your team. Queensland, Pidget, Emily Salt. Great work by James Harris, Mr. Softball, South Australia. He's done a great job this week with this championship. He should be proud of him, his team and his volunteers. Queensland, worthy winners. Kurahara, just been outstanding all tournament. You know, she's had a big final as far as just being involved in the play. But it's Hanson, the shortstop, a couple of really valuable hits. Brooke Stewart. Two clutch hits left and a left field and centre field. We've been saying it all day, Rad, Brody, how good a player she is. Everyone's contributed down that line all day long. So Bellow's been great. Conica's lights out in the field, in the outfield, picks up a single as well. Hanari, the hero from the middle game, she's got a hit as well. Contributions all down the line, but none better than the pitcher in the middle, Solomon. Yeah. Just what an absolute outstanding effort. And an impressive effort from SA when you look at Harari Kurahara. She batted four times, didn't get on base yeah. once. And she was sacrificed, but she contributed. Yeah. yeah, she contributed, but that that is uh, a really good effort from the South Australian Super, super proud of South Australia, yeah. though. They've taken another step. Last year, they got rolled in the in the reverse game like this last year they made it through to their first ever final coach lucas in his first year done a great job with the group yep. and they should be super proud of the performance that they put up they've been great all week um and you know georgia hood just a massive effort by her but knife and two for an natural in a championship final she's been amazing we've talked about maddie scott at length about how good she's been Havis had some big moments. Callahan had big moments. Ballard was the one that scored the run for SA to get it all started. Jorgensen's been great in the field. And Neve Adams has been just a hero all week. You can correct me if I'm wrong, as I look down the list, I think every single one of them is still age eligible to go around again next year for the South Australian team. Uh, yeah, thanks for mentioning them, Anthony. I just want to quickly thank all the people that made this event happen. Uh, you cannot put on an event like this unless you're all hands on deck. The softball SA staff worked for weeks in the lead up to this. Thank you to the uh, Softball Australia crew, including our technical delegate Sue Tomlinson and the tournament convener Bianca Chiera, the grounds crew as well, the, the people in the bar, Anthony, you led that team real well. My commentators are in part of the Spacequake Sports crew and Brandon and your team Thank you. You'll be back for the Gilly Shield. All games of the Gilly Shield to be broadcast thanks to Spacequake Sports. So we'll see you January 2nd and 6th. I've got to go, so I'll let you two wrap up. Well done and congratulations to Queensland. Yeah, look, and don't, uh, look, James Harris as well. He's been in the mix of all of those things. So he's had a massive week. So he doesn't take, uh, he doesn't take congratulations well, but he's, again, delivered another great tournament for South Australian softball. Should be very proud of the efforts that he's put in. I don't know what to say, Lee. I've just seen one of the best games of softball I yeah, think I've seen terrific. in a long time. Saved the best for last. I mean, we? I thought watching East Texas back to this, their, their contribution at this tournament, watching them play was an absolute privilege. 
but I've just seen three great games of softball. I mean, two of them were lopsided sort of blowouts because of just the, the type of games that were played, the dominance. But the two best teams made the final. They went at it back and forth, back and forth, and just an epic game. There's no, no genuinely no real loser if you're a, a oh, fan of the sport. But Queensland couldn't be a more worthy winner. South Australia proved in the Gillies how hard it is to come and play three games in a row on the day and that's exactly what Queensland have done today yep. they've done it the hard way Solomon's had to pitch in all of those games and she has delivered a master class on the national stage and um, you know what a what an absolute superstar thank you to everybody that James mentioned and all of the volunteers that have done a great job thank you to those people that have been watching at home yes, great certainly. feedback we've had a great week Anything to close on that, Lee? Uh, no, I think you've covered everything wonderfully well, Stormy. It's uh, uh, just a great game to finish up with, you know. It's uh, game number 40 for the week. That's a lot of games, isn't it? Yeah, a it lot is. of games in a short space of time. As you mentioned before, triple headers, you know. It's tough. It's uh, like tournaments used to be six days. All right, well... We're not going to be able to bring you the presentations uh, going forth here, but there's plenty of people here that'll be filming it for you back home in Queensland to, to celebrate to all the teams that have come to the national championships, uh, championships here at West Beach on beautiful Ghana land. Thank you for travelling to here. We wish you all the best. Travel safe home. And to all you people at home, have a Merry Christmas, have a great New Year, and we'll see you back here at West Beach on January 2nd for the start of the National Championships Open Women's Gilly Shield. South Australia looks to defend for the first time in 66 years. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon.